come, and you will not delay. You will illumine what is hidden in darkness and reveal himself to all the nations. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Today is the last day before the Christmas Novena starts to happen. And you'll notice tomorrow, on the 17th of December, the readings switch. All the readings that we've been listening to right now are speaking more about um, the coming of the Lord, particularly the coming of the Lord and the second coming. They're very much focused on that. Or they're Isaiah prophesying uh, the, the coming of the Lord. But we're going to see that everything switches, and now we're going to be focused particularly on how Jesus came 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem. And so we're going to start seeing that story unfold. So it's important, whenever you see the scriptures kind of switch like that, it's a sign within the liturgy that it's kind of like we've been going up on the roller coaster, and we're just kind of going over like that, and it's going to start taking off, and it's going to get um, really, really fast on its way to Christmas. So this is a time to kind of take a breath, because maybe we've gotten really busy with more of the worldly way of getting ready for Christmas. Maybe we're focusing on whether we have our lights up, our tree up, things like that. All important. This is a moment to take a breath and say, how can I live the rest of Advent with that heart of Mary, with the space, with the quiet, and with the prayerful attitude that will allow Christmas to become very, very deep and meaningful. If we don't allow that space, then Christmas goes by, and it's just another busy season. So it's really important to, to enter into this moment. This is also tomorrow is when we hear the O Antiphon start. The, the, the verses of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel actually come from this ancient tradition of the church, of these different ways of calling Christ, different names of Christ. And so that's also coming as well. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the coming solemnity of your Son may bestow healing upon us in this present life and bring us the rewards of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
return to me and be safe, all you ends of the earth. For I am God, there is no other. By myself I swear, uttering my just decree and my unalterable word. To me every knee shall bend, by me every tongue shall swear, saying only the Lord, only in the Lord are just deeds and power. Before him in shame shall come, all who vent their anger against him, in the Lord shall be the vindication and the glory of all the descendants of Israel. The word of the Lord. Rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a savior. Let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a savior. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a savior. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Let the clouds rain down on the just one, and the earth bring forth its savior. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him, and salvation along the way of his steps. Let the clouds John summoned two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? When the men came to the Lord, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to ask you, has sent us to you to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? At that time, Jesus cured many of their diseases, sufferings, and evil spirits. He also granted sight to many who were blind. And Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. The Gospel of the Lord. are just, they're full of so much death. Um, can think of it in terms of the surprise of God and also the challenge of God. So let's talk about the surprise of God. When you hear the way that the Lord speaks about what he's going to accomplish. He speaks of it in terms of agricultural terms within the desert. Let justice ascend, O heavens, like dew from above. Like gentle rain, let the skies drop it forth. Let the earth open and salvation bud forth. Let justice also spring. I, the Lord, have created this. So if you think about it in the desert, these kind of 
rainstorms are things that don't always happen. They're very unpredictable. They are not there for a long time. Things are starting to get dry and wilted. And then when you least expect it, a drop falls, and then another. And in this case, it's like dew. It's a gentle rain. It's something almost imperceptible. But that's what the roses, the rose of Sharon, what they can detect, they can feel in such a dry area. Maybe they can detect a moisture that maybe us in maybe more of a temperate climate wouldn't really detect, wouldn't really see it as nourishment. They can feel every single little bit of drop right on their petals and they soak them in and it gives them nourishment. They're able to bloom. This is the other unexpected aspect. Let salvation bud forth. Another translation of this is let the earth bring forth a savior. So notice how if you read it in two different ways, this is the neat thing about Hebrew and Greek is that, especially Hebrew, you can read it and it means two different things, and a lot of times it's the same thing. And that's why um, the, the Jewish people are masters of puns. So if you like puns, if you read Hebrew, it's actually filled with puns because you're saying like this and this, and you could actually mean both of the things at the exact same time. So when it says, let justice descend like dew from above, let the earth open and salvation bud forth, one hand, you sort of hear like, okay, justice descending, so the rain is going to be kind of like, you know, in a just sort of way. Uh, there's going to be some sort of salvation budding forth, but if you look at it in a different way, it's very personal. Because it says, let the clouds rain down the just one. It's the same wording, but you say it in different ways in English. And the earth bring forth a savior. Do you see how that opens up this image? Mary could be seen as the earth. The Holy Spirit overshadows Mary, like gentle dew coming down from above. Think about what we pray in the Mass. Let your Holy Spirit come upon these gifts like the dewfall, so that they might become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what's being said here. This is actually an image of the incarnation in which you have Mary, Holy Spirit, Jesus. What happens at Mass? Mary, who is the mother of the church, she's the type of the church, she's the perfect image, and she was the very first member of the church before anyone else was there when Jesus took his abode within the temple of Mary. She was the church in the very beginning because she already had the fruits of Pentecost. She already was filled with the Holy Spirit. So she was the domestic church in a very, very real sense. That's one of the reasons why there's that beautiful tradition with Joseph when she, when Joseph sees that Mary has conceived in this mysterious way. A lot of times we usually think in terms of he was mad, he thought that she betrayed or, or whatever, but there is this very beautiful patristic, like church fathers, like go back to these guys like St. Augustine and some of these guys, and they say that Joseph thought that he was in the presence of the temple of the Lord, like the Holy of Holies, and said, I'm not worthy to even be a part of this mystery, and I just got to get out of here. It's kind of like, you know, how St. Paul would say, or um, St. Peter would say, depart from me, for I'm a sinful man. So Mary, at every Mass, she is mother of the church, she's here present. And all of us, to the extent that we imitate Mary's example of being a true disciple of the Lord, of following, of sitting at the feet of the Lord, receiving the Lord, then we too are like the earth. The Holy Spirit comes down and wants to form Jesus Christ deep within us 
so that we too might become more and more an icon of Christ. That all that expression of his hands, his feet, his eyes, his smile, all those things. And the very bread and wine, which are earthly things, they represent all of the beauty of creation, but also the beauty of culture of mankind. Because bread can't come into existence on its own. Wine can't come into existence on its own. You have to take something that's natural, that's being given by God, and then mankind takes it. And with the gifts that have been entrusted to mankind, he then takes it and transforms it and then offers it back to God as bread and wine. But then the Lord says, well, I'm going to overshadow that. Just like he took the, the masterpiece of creation, Mary. He says, I'm going to take this, this, the first fruits of this creation, the bread and wine, and I'm going to overshadow it. I'm going to soak it with my power, and then I'm going to transform it into Christ. So that as you receive the body and blood, and you are soaked and overshadowed with the Holy Spirit like Mary, you too can become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that what we pray after the consecration? That as we receive this one bread, this one body, and this one chalice, that we might become one body, one spirit in Christ. This is deep stuff. You are what you eat. You become more and more like Christ to the extent that you allow the fruit of the earth, this salvation that has bud budded forth to take hold within your soul so that you become more and more his body and you have his blood coursing through you. As St. Paul would say, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So this is the surprise. And the surprise is also a challenge because as we see in the gospel today, you have John and even John could go through dark nights, difficult moments. He's in prison right now. And maybe there's a, a temptation that's there. Again, there's a, there's a tradition that John was sanctified in the womb when he leaped for joy, when he heard through the power of the Holy Spirit, Mary's voice, and was in the presence of Jesus Christ. But it doesn't mean that a person can't struggle or suffer or wonder. So John is in prison, and he sends two of his disciples. Remember, at one point, Andrew was one of his disciples. There was another one, but these are possibly other disciples that are going. And they're saying, John is asking, are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? So maybe there was that questioning there. We don't know exactly what's going on in, in John's heart there, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that he's falling into sin, but it's just in those moments of, of darkness and isolation and saying, are you here, Lord? And notice what the Lord says. He says, look what you see. Tell John all of these things, and all of them were signs that the Messiah would come, but they also were the things that God himself would do for his people. He would raise the dead. We hear that in the book of the prophet Ezekiel. He would make the lame walk, the, the, the blind see, the deaf hear, the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. This is the servant of the Lord on whom the Spirit of the Lord is resting, and it's Jesus. But notice how it says here, and blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. And so if you link these together, this idea of the, the surprise of how the Lord shows himself when you least expect it, very imperceptible. And the way that he reveals himself is through very tangible realities. The blind hear, the, the, the blind see, the deaf hear. But this blessed is the one who takes no offense at me is the Lord also saying, I'm coming to you in imperceptible ways. Don't take offense at me when I reveal myself to you. The person that we encounter who is 
lonely, who is suffering, who is blind, who is deaf. All of those persons that we encounter are all of those moments in our life, those trials that we encounter. The Lord's in that mystery. Sometimes we can only see the, the struggle or the difficult person. But if we have a sacramental vision, sacramental means there's a visible reality that is revealing an invisible grace. Then we can start seeing the world in a deeper way. We can see the world beneath the world. And that's the face of God. I want to leave you just with a, a very short prayer that Mother Teresa of Calcutta um, has within this Magnificat publication. And this is what made me think about this image of the way in which the Lord appears to us in imperceptible ways, and we'll miss Him unless we're attuned like the Rose of Sharon in the desert that is able to recognize the little gentle dew the Holy Spirit coming down and wanting to form a Christ in that situation. So this is what she says. Jesus is the Word made flesh. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the victim offered for our sins on the cross. Jesus is the sacrifice offered at the Holy Mass for the sins of the world and mine. Jesus is the Word to be spoken. Jesus is the truth to be told. Jesus is the way to be walked. Jesus is the light to be lit. Jesus is the life to be lived. Jesus is the love to be loved. Jesus is the joy to be shared. Jesus is the sacrifice to be offered. Jesus is the peace to be given. Jesus is the bread of life to be eaten. Jesus is the hungry to be fed. Jesus is the thirsty to be satiated. Jesus is the naked to be clothed. Jesus is the homeless to be taken in. Jesus is the sick to be healed. Jesus is the lonely to be loved. Jesus comes to us all the time in the distressing disguise of the poor. Let's not take offense at him. healing presence be upon them and bring them comfort. Let us praise the Lord. For all of us present in this assembly, may God fashion our hearts in this Advent season to see Jesus more readily around us. Let us praise the Lord. For the souls of the faithful departed, may God's mercy bring them to eternal life. We especially pray for the repose of the soul of Elizabeth Way, for whom I've been asked to offer this Mass. Let us praise the Lord. We pray for the intention of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray that our personal relationship with Jesus Christ be nourished by the Word of God and the life of prayer. Let us praise the Lord. We pray for all the intentions within Our Lady's intercessory box, for all those prayers that have been given to us online, those that are within our hearts as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, 
now and at the hour of our death. Loving God, we thank you for hearing our prayers. We ask that you answer them according to your good and gracious will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. In the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly, to complete what, what, was, what was begun in sacred mystery, and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design he formed long ago open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. So remember that image of what I mentioned during the homily. You are indeed holy, O Lord fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way when 
the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
show your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder that this coming Saturday, from 7 o'clock in the morning until 3 p.m., um, will be available all of that time for confession. And then from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. So it's a great time just right before Christmas to get to confession um, online look at the schedule, just kind of just pick one of those time slots or little 15 minutes time slots and just, you know, just put your, your name there. Um, that doesn't go out to the whole world. It's just for me to see who's going to be coming during that time. And then I'll be right over in the garage, the garage of mercy. Um, so just look for that sign of divine mercy and saying confessions inside. The Lord be with you. And may almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son. Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly to you, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To you do I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother, the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, that in your mercy care and answer me. Amen.